Thank you, Doreen. That was lovely. Welcome, everyone, to our Sunday worship. I am the Reverend Allison Cornell, and this is St. Stephen's in Sierra Vista, uh, Arizona. We're glad to have you all with us this morning. As usual, we have a few announcements before we begin, uh, so let me very quickly go over those. Um, a few folks to keep in your prayers. Uh, Jenny Giswold, who's one of our members that comes on Wednesday, her brother that she's been taking care of uh, for dementia is now on hospice. So please keep uh, Jenny and her brother in your prayers. Um, also, Bruce Hart, uh, who has uh, been undergoing some treatments, uh, I've left him a couple of voicemail messages. I have not heard back from him yet, but uh, do keep him in prayers as he has some treatments up in Tucson uh, uh, undergoing. Last night we had Bill and his son William and Wanda with us. Uh, I will be meeting on Monday, tomorrow, with Bill to discuss a memorial service for Anne. So as soon as we get some of those details ironed out as to when and so forth, uh, we'll let you know when that will be. But uh, expect that in the next few weeks that we will set that up uh, based on if they're going to have family come back from wherever they are and all that. So uh, we'll let you know more as uh, we talk about that on Monday. Um, in your bulletins today, the last song is number 604. It's correct on the boards. It's incorrect in your bulletin. So look at the boards for the numbers uh, when we get to that point. Um, this past week, Robin and I learned that we have been chosen to be in season five of The Chosen. Uh, so we're going to be extras in the crowd scenes again. We don't yet know exactly what it is. We know that it's leading up to Holy Week. Uh, so it may be the Palm Sunday with the palms and everything. It may be some other scenes we don't know yet. Um, but the third week of April, uh, I'll be leaving after worship on Sunday and heading out to Utah. Robin and her sister are heading out uh, earlier that day. They're going to stay the whole week. I'm going to be there for Monday and Tuesday, and then I'll be back on Wednesday. Um, and then they're going to stay through Friday. So uh, we'll see what happens when they finally release it, whether or not we make it into any of the scenes where we can go, stop, there we are. <laughs> that, brief, that brief panning, you know, of, there we are. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, let's see. Other things I want to mention. Um, as we continue into March, um, the loose cash that goes in the plate or what goes in the gratitude basket is going to sponsor kids scholarships at summer camp at Chapel Rock. Uh, two will be sort of of our own, uh, Tabitha and one of her friends. And then uh, two will be for Camp Genesis, which are kids uh, whose parents are incarcerated and give them a chance to have some fun and take their mind off the fact that mom and dad are in jail. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, Dottie has a list of some of those campers that are going, that we know already, that are going to Camp Genesis. And if you would like to write a, uh, a little note of encouragement, you know, have fun in camp, thinking of you, praying for you, uh, you're going to have great time, you know, those kinds of uh, sentiments, uh, and you'd like to do a little card, put it in an envelope, and if you want the name and age, uh, Dottie has those. Uh, and then if you just want to do a generic one and bring it in and drop it off to Dottie, and then we can fill in the name, we can do that. But the ages are from like 17 to 8 uh, years old. And the idea is that one day they're going to come back to their bunk and there's going to be this pile of mail for them. And it will have all these encouraging notes for them uh, to help them feel loved. So uh, that's kind of the idea. And see Dottie, yes? Yeah, don't sign it with your full name. You can put, a, you know, uh, either Friends of St. Stephen's or a first name, but don't put your whole name. And, uh, and that way we don't have to worry about uh, identity theft kinds of things or whatnot. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, on Friday, March the 1st, we will see the last two episodes of season four in the theater over at the mall. If you'd like to join us, it's at 3.50 in the afternoon this time. 3.50 in the afternoon, and after we watch those last two episodes, we uh, will head over to Applebee's and have a time to reflect on what we just watched and uh, mention our discussion uh, there. So you're welcome to join us for that as well. Um, 
Last weekend, when Robin was serving, she took her cross necklace off. It's a DOK cross, and she put it on the uh, counter back there in the sacristy. And when she went back, when she remembered that she'd left it there, it, we haven't found it. So if someone accidentally picked that up, um, could you please see me? And uh, she's really anxious to get that cross back, that necklace back. Um, so if you happen to know where it is, where it went, how it got put away or something like that, uh, just let us know because she's been looking for that. Um, there are other announcements on the announcement sheet that I call your attention to. Anything not on the announcement sheet that people would like? Wilma, I'll get back to you in a minute. March birthday is next. We will have a birthday cake each first Sunday of the month, and this one will be for March, which will be the kickoff. All right, so if you have a birthday in March, make sure you come next Sunday because we're going to have cake for you. Priscilla Burroughs will be back visiting for 12 days. Uh, since I am working, she will need to be visiting with everyone who would like to take her out for lunch mm -hmm. or uh, have her come visit during the day. And uh, you'll have to include me. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to see that she is entertained and occupied and doesn't just sit in my house all day. All right. So those of you who are familiar with Priscilla, who has been a member here and she moved to Texas, she's going to be visiting uh, primarily with Nancy, but is encouraged to be taken out to lunch and, and visited with while she's here. And she's coming in on... Saturday next, okay, all right, so she's coming in next Saturday, and uh, in between times, you'll give us your new address, because I'm assuming it'll be at your new house, okay, so that we know where to go pick her up, if we're going to take her to lunch, all right, <laughs> anybody else? All right, then, let's stand, and our opening song this morning is in our hymnal 1982, it's number 613, Thy Kingdom Come, O God. Continue at the top of page two in your bulletins. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, 
We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to the promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our Kyrie. It is good to give thanks to the ageless God, to sing praises to your name, Most High, to declare your faithful love in the morning and your trustworthiness by night, upon the ten strings and the harp, upon the murmurings of the lyre, for you have made me glad, well spring with life, by your work, at the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, womb of the creation. Your designs are so very profound. A righteous woman or a man flourishes like a palm tree and grows like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of she who is holy. In the courts of our God who they flourish, still producing fruit in their elderly years. That would sap and ever dream. They declare that the mighty God is upright. She is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in her. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First lesson, a reading from Genesis, chapter 3, 1 to 7. Now the serpent had more naked intelligence than any other animal of the field that the sovereign God had made. And it said to the woman, Indeed, did God say you two shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of any tree in the garden we may eat, though of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, God said you two shall not eat, and shall not touch it, lest you two die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you too will certainly not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you too will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her man, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians 2, 4 to 10. Now God, who is rich in mercy, loving us with a great love when we were dead through our trespasses, brought us to life together with Christ, by grace have you all been saved. And God raised us up together with Christ, 
seated us all together in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This, that God might show in the ages to come the abundant riches of God's grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace have you all been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what God has crafted, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our path. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Beware of false prophets who will come to join you to you all in sheep's clothing, but inside are rapacious wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Any are grapes gathered from thorns or from thistles, figs, thus every good tree bears beautiful fruit, but the rotten tree bears wicked fruit. A good tree cannot bear wicked fruit, nor can a corrupt tree bear beautiful fruit. Every tree that does no does not bear beautiful fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed that there is one theme that appears in three of our lessons today. And that would be fruit. Here, who here likes fruit? Show of hands. Yep, yep. Most people like fruit. Which one's your favorite? Raspberries. Raspberries. Apples. Apples. Bananas. Peaches. Peaches. Bananas. Bananas. Pears. 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 Cherries. Pears. Pears. Peaches. Peaches. Anybody else? Strawberries. Yeah, I myself, it sort of depends on the season. I'm someone who uh, looks to what season it is. So right now, uh, citrus is kind of the thing that's been harvested, so I've been enjoying a lot of oranges. Later when we get into the early spring, middle spring, strawberries are going to be my favorite. And then as we get into summer, it's usually watermelon and peaches, and then in the fall, pears and apples, because I, I know we can get them any time, but... It seems like that's their season when they taste best, you know? So that's kind of what I think. How many of you uh, know what a sheep's favorite fruit is? Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> How about a vampire's favorite fruits? Blood orange and... Nectarines. <laughs> Anybody want to guess which one was King Kong's favorite fruit? Apricots. <laughs> all right, all right. One more. Which fruit would uh, those that are twins think is their favorite fruit? Pears. <laughs> P-A-I-R-S, pears. And have you noticed that we also have developed a number of different idioms that involve fruit, uh, expressions of uh, ways to say truths about situations, things like, life is a bowl of cherries. What does that mean? Sweet? Delightful. Delightful? Tasty? Tasty? Things are going well. Things are going well, exactly. What about the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? What does that mean? Children are like their parents. Children are like their parents, exactly. Yeah. How about when life gives you lemons? Make you make lemonade. lemonade. What does that mean? Carry on. Carry on. Make, make the, the best, best of a bad situation. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, what about uh, when someone doesn't give a fig about something? What does that mean? Care. They don't care, exactly. They don't care at all. Right. So the fruits that are described in our lessons today are symbolic. They're allegories or metaphors, sort of like those idioms. 
they represent something more than the actual fruits from trees. Now we're going to start with the psalm in which we see the, uh, the psalm verse that says that righteous men and women, that is men and women who follow God's right ways in their lives, those men and women flourish and continue producing fruit in their elder years, fat with sap and ever green. Now we know that men and women are not trees that grow fruit and don't have sap and are not green. So when we read that bit, what does it suggest to you instead? What does it mean for someone to produce fruit in their elder years? With children. Children? Hmm? Children? No, well, it might, I guess. We've seen some examples of that in the Bible, that's for yeah, sure. Good works. Good works. Life continues and they and they have things to share. Yeah. Wisdom. Wisdom. I have a batch of spiritual children. Yeah. So They're as scattered all over the world. Yeah, so you you may pass on something to them to help grow. Wisdom. Yeah, wisdom. Yeah, exactly. That's the way I understand that particular part of this uh, bit of the psalm. That the purpose of a fruit tree is to grow fruit. Fruit that is good, sweet, and when ripe, tasty. Something that feeds others. Something that provides, something that satisfies and delights the palate. So fruit from a person, especially someone who's experienced a lot of life, might be wisdom, might be sage advice or guidance or support, encouragement, stories, examples. Jesus told stories in parables. There once was a man who da 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 da. Or similes. The kingdom of heaven is like short stories with a lesson to be discovered when reflected upon what he said. And this is a kind of fruit, something that feeds us with wisdom and understanding. Now, what about that part about being fat with sap? What is, what is sap? Hmm? Yeah, it's a it's a liquid inside a tree, right? Like what is, what does it do? Feeds. Nourish, it feeds, nourishes. Yeah, exactly. It carries the nutrients and things around in the tree. So it's this liquid that flows inside of trees. It's what keeps the tree alive. Um, it's its vitality. It's lifeblood. It's health. It's vigor. So to be full of sap, someone would be someone who is full of health, energy maybe even into their senior year, someone who finds each day a joy to experience, someone who's alive with possibilities and full of hope for what God can do to bless them or the people around them. Now, my last little part, what does it mean to be evergreen? How can a person be evergreen? Strong. Strong. You know, you think about somebody who's very brittle. Mm -hmm. She's very brittle. Mm -hmm. It means like she could break at any moment. Mm -hmm. You are going right where I want to go. Young. Young, exactly. Anybody else? Healthy. Healthy? Yeah, an evergreen is one that does not lose its greenery during the seasons, right? It doesn't lose its leaves or its fronds or its needles. And it looks the same year round, year after year, so eternal, right? And the reason that we use evergreens at Christmas is just for this. It's for our decorations and our Christmas trees. It helps us to remember the eternal nature of God and the promise of our eternal life. And another way to understand being green is to be youthful, young, innocent, um, somebody who perhaps is always useful, always youthful. And trees that are green are more flexible or pliable uh, in that same way. They're not brittle. They're not likely to break. When a big storm comes along, they bend with the wind instead of breaking. Um, they don't allow those storms to toss, to toss them about, but they don't break. And a person who is evergreen might be one who has learned to be flexible and to bend under the pressures of life but not break, to be youthful and e eternally able to get through uh, life with an outlook that knows this is just temporary. And while you have to remember that there is more life after this life, 
and eternal life to come. May we all live in ways that lead us to produce good fruit in our old age and someone who is full of wisdom and evergreen. Now, frankly, those of you who know our member Harriet, I think of Harriet when I read that part of our <laughs> psalm. Someone who is uh, evergreen, she's, she's always hopeful, she doesn't let life get her down, she carries on, and she is full of wisdom and stories in her old age that she's, of life that she's experienced. So to me, Harriet was like, when I was reading this, I was like, that sounds just like Harriet. <laughs> when we look at our Genesis story, which has an actual fruit tree in it, Adam and Eve and the serpent in the garden, uh, and we encounter this story about a fruit from that tree, um, we need to, under, wonder, need to understand what is that forbidden fruit? What does that represent? Anyone? Knowledge. Knowledge. Anyone else? Well, rebellion against God. Rebellion against God. Lack of maturity exactly. or understanding? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Trying to be God. Trying to be God. Trying to be okay, instead of being obedient. So disobedience, perhaps, is a symbol of that. Yeah. Here's what I kind of take away from it. Temptation to do something we ought not do. Uh, disobedience, a loss of innocence, which kind of goes to the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Or disbelief or doubt of God, back to what you were saying. The fruit, possibly an apple, we don't really know what kind of fruit it is. We often symbolize it as an apple. I think is also a symbol of trust. Trusting God and the direction that God gives us for the goodness that God desires for us in our lives. And it's also a test. A testing of oneself against the boundaries of what is acceptable and learning the consequences of our actions. Sort of like you were saying, uh, Valerie, about you know, don't do this because you don't know what's gonna happen afterwards if you do. The story of the fruit tree in the Garden of Eden is a story for us to understand our own daily choices that are presented to us. The fruit is something that tempts us to do something that we may end up having some nasty consequences as a result. Will we do it? Or will we avoid it? Do we trust God's ways? Or do we distrust how God wants us to live our lives and put our trust in either ourselves or in what someone else says? Now, lastly, we have our gospel lesson. And Jesus is teaching about how to know whether a person or a situation or an entity like a business or a government is good or not. Jesus says that every good tree bears beautiful fruit but the rotten tree bears wicked fruit. In other words, good fruits come from good trees and bad fruits come from bad trees. So what do you think Jesus is getting at with what's the good fruit and the bad fruit? We used to use the word discernment in the church. Mm -hmm. How do you see what's in front of you? How mm -hmm. do you look past the masks and the cons and, and the games mm -hmm. to see what is truly yeah, see what's true. But what is that good fruit and bad fruit? Definition of sour grapes. A definition of sour grapes? Bad fruit. That would be a bad fruit. Sour. sour grapes, yeah. What else? Thoughts. Good fruit and bad fruit. What does Jesus mean? That which is of God and that which is not. That which is of God and that which is not. Jesus says, some people are going to come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside are rapacious wolves. Jesus warns us that the appearance of the tree itself may not be its real character. Don't judge the book by the cover, in other words. Jesus says, look to the fruit that is produced. Is it good fruit? Do they declare, that person or that entity, by word and action, things that are godly 
or Christ-like, or do they do things or say things that are in opposition to God's ways? Do you hear or see the fruits of love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Those are the good fruits. Those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And they indicate that people who produce those kinds of fruits are in all likelihood good trees, good people. That's the sort of fruit that we want to harvest and feed ourselves on and look for those good fruits of people in our lives that have uh, something like that that they are producing, that they are giving us to eat, to make sure that we eat good fruit and not bad fruit. You have a question or comment? Yep. Because I think it kind of circles. Okay. Back to the song again. Uh huh. Because if we don't feed ourselves with good fruits, then we become brittle. Mm hmm. And we cannot provide sap, we can't provide the fruit. Mm hmm. So the whole, the, the readings today are circular, aren't they? Mm hmm. They're saying if you don't feed yourself, right. Produce the good fruits. Produce the good fruits that people need. Right. That if yeah. we eat the rotten fruit, it won't be as healthy for us. Right. And therefore, we might not get to that ripe old age to be able to produce our own good fruits. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So in closing, get ready for this one. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say about these readings and how they apply to ourselves? Well, I think we can all agree that none of us wants to be a bad apple. <laughs> Instead, may we all reach that ripe old age. And when life gives us lemons, that we are able to make lemonade. And may we realize that we don't really fall that far from the tree when we compare ourselves to Adam and Eve and how to handle life's temptations. Indeed, many of our choices may come out all pear-shaped. That is, not as we intended. But thank goodness that God doesn't let uh, that become sour grapes between us and God's self. That God regards us and all of his children as the apple of his eye, and he wants the best for us. But some may believe that when their prayers or wishes are not answered in the way that they want them to answer, that they may think that God just doesn't give a fig. <laughs> However, I've heard it through the grapevine that that just isn't true. God doesn't go bananas when we make bad choices. God is as cool as a cucumber and works to bring as much good out of our lives as possible. You see, he really does want our lives to be a bowl full of cherries. So when we begin to question ourselves about what we should or should not do, we should remember that God is the top banana and that we should use our coconuts and just be a peach and do as God instructs us to do. That way we don't upset the apple cart in our relationship with God and our fellow human beings and our lives can be all peaches and cream, possibly even with a cherry on top. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
prayers of the people. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make them chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. Lord, be with them. In the Dyson cycle of prayer, we pray for the St. Matthews in Chandler. Lord, be with them. We pray for the first peoples of this land, especially the Apache and Tohono O'odham peoples who call this area home. For greater understanding and cooperation between us towards the common good for all. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
and join in singing the doxology found at the bottom of page 7. be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord our God. It is meet and right to show to you. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the whole sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of ye, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to mercifully accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
this time in our worship, we like to recognize anyone who might be having a birthday or an anniversary. Do we have any birthdays this week coming up? My grandmother, Colleen, will be 100. 100, wow. And which day? Uh, Sunday. On next Sunday, a week Sunday, from today. Okay. Big party on Saturday. Big party, yeah, the big centennial, absolutely. Anybody else that's... How many? We're hoping to get over 100. Hoping to get over 100 people. Wow. <laughs> that is going to be a party. <laughs> Anybody else this week? Looks like Grandma might be the only one. So, okay then. Um, and Grandma's first name? Colleen. Colleen. Okay. So let's say our birthday prayer for Colleen. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, upon your servant. As she begins another year, grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? No? Special healing prayers. Um, I mentioned Jenny and Bruce uh, and Bill's family as they continue to mourn the passing of Anne. Uh, others for prayers. Yes. Karen. Karen. Healing prayers. Healing prayers. Yes. We've been uh, praying for Emily for some time now. She is doing great. Emily's doing better. Much better. Fabulous. Glad to hear that. Other healing prayers. Yes, Andrew. Adam and Brian. Adam and Brian. Okay. Anybody else for healing prayers? Let's raise our right hands and say together the healing prayer. Oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Travelers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so family and friends that are coming for Colleen's celebration of, yes. of birthday. Okay, so and for two from Canada okay. and two from Canada even. All right, great. So for all of those, and that's the other. you guys are heading out this week. Okay, all right. They're going home on Wednesday. Home on Wednesday. Well, we're driving to Tucson on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So prayers for that. Yeah. Okay, home to Montreal, all right. Other travelers, yes. Uh, these two uh, residents in tomorrow, and back, and Saturday, uh, Saturday. Okay. So you're going from here to Reston, back again, then Vegas, and back again. Okay, a lot of travel for you, yeah. Anybody else, travelers, yes? My friend Jack is leaving today. Uh huh. Okay. We'll be back next week. All right. All right. Anybody else? All right. Okay. For all of those that are traveling, let us raise our right hands and say the traveler's prayer. O oh God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, not on our little green cards, an opportunity to share gratitudes where you've seen uh, God at work in your life, an answer to a prayer or a blessing that's come your way. I'm going to kick it off with two things. One, uh, that we had John Nielsen with us on Friday. It was a fabulous concert. Uh, if you weren't able to be here, boy, you missed out. Um, and we really enjoyed having him here, and uh, we're looking at uh, in another couple of years having him back again. So, uh, we'll be planning that in the not-too-distant future. Uh, so I was blessed to have him with us and to share that time with us. And then the other thing is uh, many of you know Keith, who is chaplain over at the uh, fort. Uh, he got word late on Friday, I guess it was, that he has been approved for ordination to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And so that will be happening. I believe he's got a chaplain's conference coming up in, uh, in Maryland, I think. 
uh, and he'll be ordained there. Uh, so uh, that'll be sometime in April. I don't know the exact date, uh, but we'll be sure to have a little celebration for him that he is uh, moving forward and going to be ordained to the priesthood in the Episcopal Church. So uh, grateful for that as well. Other blessings, gratitudes. Yes. I'm glad that the lady who ran into my car only damaged the one door. <laughs> <laughs> the lady who ran into her car only damaged the door. And I, um, I'm just very grateful to uh, be Colleen's granddaughter and to have had her in my life so long. Yes, that she's had a long life. All and right. I am very grateful that my cousin, my mother's niece, and her husband have been able to visit us. Yes, it's been lovely having you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else with a gratitude or something they'd like to mention? A pass, uh, 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 answer to a prayer? Yes? Dottie? You know, the little flowers that grow along the foothills between the avenues, mm -hmm. they're in bloom again. They're yeah. They're all starting to pop out and be saying hi there every day. Yeah, the ash tree in my front yard is starting to produce little <coughs> tiny green leaves, so spring <laughs> is springing as we speak. Anybody else? Again, thank you. What goes in here is going to go towards our scholarships for summer camp, so I appreciate those that have been donating and uh, hope that God will continue to be active in all of our lives. Let's turn us now to our post-communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. O oh God, who has made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and did send thy blessed Son to preach to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same thy son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing song this morning is in the Gather Hymnal, number 604. The call is clear and simple.
people of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are called to love and serve. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh. <laughs>